I uh, took my truck to the repair shop uh, because of uh, a loud ground, grinding noise that I was hearing. Um, also a really heavy vibration coming you know, from somewhere uh, in the truck, on the truck, you know, a heavy vibration. Um, you know, July 14th, 2011, definitely a day I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, unfortunately, I picked up the same truck from that very repair shop. Uh, you know, I, I did my pre-trip uh, inspections, all my paperwork. Uh, left that morning uh, to go to you know some of my uh, stops. I believe one you know, my first stop uh, for that day when I saw a warning light on the dash by the steering wheel and I immediately called the repair company. Uh, they told me that that was normal and for me to disregard it. Uh, I, I drove down the road, uh, continued on, and uh, shortly thereafter the, the uh, truck started shaking again, heav you know, heavily shaking. And I knew at that point that uh, uh, my life was about to drastically change. So. And then Colin was very difficult to communicate with because of his injury. He was in you know, severe pain and uh, he was paralyzed from the waist down basically. And, and uh, Colin had difficulty communicating even before the accident according to uh, his family. Uh, and he was heavily medicated uh, because of, of the nerve damage and, and he just had difficulty communicating. But one thing he kept telling me was that, Mr. Allen, I'm driving this truck and all of a sudden it started shaking. And when it started shaking, it went out of control. And so we took that at face value, went back, we looked at the truck a couple more times actually, and then finally we found in the rear of the truck that there was a control rod that was loose. It was disconnected. Uh, we also knew the truck had just been worked on by a company called Empire. And uh, the more we researched, the more we realized that this was a lateral control rod which would cause the truck to do exactly what um, Colin said it did. So once we discovered that, then we filed the case and we continued to develop the case. Uh, Colin also said that he was wearing his seatbelt, yet he was found outside the truck in the median of the interstate paralyzed. And, um, and as it turns out, we, we found out that this particular truck had a seat belt that we had had cases before for false latch. It would, the driver would think that the belt was latched and it was actually not latched. And, in the rollover, it came loose, and there was plenty of forensic evidence to support that's exactly what happened. So everything that Colin had told us turned out to be true. And I knew that I had a great team, uh, you know, helping me out with, with everything, and I knew that um, they had my back. I knew that Mr. Allen, I knew that uh, you know, the rest of the team had my back and wanted to see uh, the best for me, wanted to see everything uh, work out um, for me. Admittedly, I was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, very, very nervous. I, um, uh, you know, the questioning, uh, listening to, you know, testimony about me, um, just knowing that, hey, I'm going to be hearing a lot of, a lot of personal information that um, is going to be ran across me on a, you know, a daily basis for however long this, you know, it, it might last. And uh, my team was there to, you know, comfort me during the times where I felt uneasy. They um, just let me know that, hey, they were there for me and that they were going to do what they needed to do to um, make sure things turned out all right. And I'm, I'm just super glad that uh, 
that they were able to do um, the, the great job that they, they did. So.